Welcome to Naked Spirituality, a video blog series of sacred attention therapy. My name is Rob Meager. For more information about sacred attention therapy in our video blog series, please visit our website at www.sacredattentiontherapy.com. These video blogs are intended to be spontaneous, unscripted dialogues between myself and other contributors to the Sacred Attention Therapy Study Group. Our guest today is Lorna Bryant, and we'll, we will be talking to Lorna about her contributions to the Sacred Attention Therapy Study Group through Sanctuary with Eden. And I'd now like to invite Lorna to come on screen. Hello, Lorna. It is so nice to be here with you in your angelic presence, <laughs> and and I must I must say to those who are watching and listening, if you sense a bit of giggling with Lauren and I, it's because we have tried this several times in the past, and it just hasn't worked because the technology hasn't cooperated, and we're now exploring and experimenting new technology. Uh, and trusting this will be it. Um, and um, it's so good to be back with you, Lorna. It's so good to be back with you. Since the fourth time, <laughs> <laughs> something like something like that. Yes. And and even even preceding this, um, I had once forgot to turn on the recording software, and we had to start over again. So uh, I'm, I'm so grateful for your graceful patience. Oh, it's been fun. <laughs> um, now, I, I, I'm going to share some new dialogue with you, but I just want to begin by giving a little bit of background to those who um, are new to you, Lorna, who are, are, are new to Sanctuary with Eden. And, and what is Sanctuary with Eden? Well, it's this place. It's this energetic place that um, in your beautiful presence, you're able to go, Lorna, perhaps in a meditative state, and you receive these messages. Um, perhaps a common term for this is channeling, although I know that's not a term that, that resonates with you entirely, but these beautiful transcendent messages come through. And the sheer volume of these messages alone is inspiring. Um, and for those who have not already visited the Sacred Attention Therapy Study Group, they'll know that one of your posts goes up every day. And I'm, and I'm going to ask you, certainly before we close out our interview today, to let people know where else they can go to be able to experience these messages. But where I want to pick up today, Lorna, is in the conversations we've had about Sanctuary with Eden. Mm -hmm. One thing you said the last time we spoke that really touched me was the healing dimension and the healing aspect of these messages. You go into and you're with Sanctuary with Eden and you receive healing. Yeah. And no doubt many who receive these messages, either via the Sacred Attention Therapy Study Group or through other means that you put them out there, are healed as well. Can you share with us, what's this healing element for you that you experience when you go into this space? Um, for me, okay, for me. Well, uh, I think that I talked to you before about my connection with I've always called it the real world since I was a child, which is not this world. <laughs> to me, I was very clear from a very early age that, that I kind of, this was, didn't feel like this was real. And there was another world that I was very much in touch with from a very early age. Um, and uh, whenever I, I used to get dreams as a child and I used to write songs, from quite early age or poems and they would just come to me and of course at that age I didn't know but it just felt good it always felt good if I had a, dr a dream I used to dream whole songs for example and wake up and just write them down 
things like that. And that's continued throughout my life. Um, and whenever it's happened, it always felt uh, like I'm not in my physical body. I'm not in my physical, you know, this is not me. Well, it is me, but not in not this body. It's not it's not physical. It's non-physical. It's transcendental. Yes, and um, it's sort of what it, whenever it happens, and it's happening. I would say now. Uh, I mean, I'm a lot older. But I'd say I I'm mostly there in that space. You know, there are certain things that pull me back into the this so-called reality, physical reality, but I'm finding the more I'm writing and the more I'm in that, you know, um, at, at space, I'm, it's becoming a more permanent thing. Um, and expecting everything, everything I see, everything I have felt in the past, my old habits, my old patterns, all the, all the traumas and in my life that I've been through, and the illnesses I've had, which brought me to start the page. Um, so it, it, it's hard to put into words. And I always, I think this is really, I used to think I couldn't write down what I was feeling because it, it's almost as if the language is not our language, it's another language. So I, although I could feel it very strongly, and I used to do um, readings for people and psychic work and healing and things like that. Um, I would feel things. I could feel what was wrong with people. I could see colours. I could see auras. I could, you know, I'd know where to put my hands. I'd know. Um, that was all non-physical, but I didn't have to write it out. I never really imagined I would write it because I didn't know that I'd be able to get across what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. Limited within our language, obviously, and our, you know, concepts and perceptions and things as well so but I really I got very ill um, I went through some very bad traumas very very serious trauma 15 years ago and in truth through my childhood and the last one that happened to me was was very bad and I got very ill and I've been ill more or less now for 15 years with with various conditions and it got to the point where I had to give up all my work and I was a professional singer um, homeopath, uh, vocal coach. I had a theatre school, um, and gradually they've all just dropped away because I actually, you know, I may look well. It's, it, I think they call it invisible illnesses, um, but I spend most of my time in bed um, because I'm in so much pain. I'm in the pain. So for me to to experience anything other than that pain, which I've got so used to, and the tiredness and um, is incredible and what I'm finding with Sanctuary I was sort of led to do it in a way but because I I lost my ability to go out into the world and help people um, physically with my teaching and singing and healing and, and I was getting so crazy because I it, it sounds bizarre but being so ill and in so much pain has actually made me better on an emotional and uh, mental level and definitely I mean I'd say hundred and million percent closer to the other world I'm talking about my real world the spirit world whatever you want to call it God love you know eternity infinity source no many labels for it um, and it's it's so when I tell pe that people say to me, how can you be so strong? How can you um, do this or, or even have any hope after what has happened to you? And I say, well, because when I, it's, those, it's that spiritual belief, it's that spiritual knowledge and knowing. And when I say knowing, I don't mean head knowing. I don't mean mind knowing or thinking. It's the knowing deep inside me that I've had since I was a child. And uh, so being in that space to me seems more natural and more comforting and stiller and there's no stress and everything just makes sense. 
and this world is so complicated now and so you know there's so much chaos and, and so much suffering and pain and I have always desperately wanted to help I mean I wanted when I was a child I wanted to save the world I wanted to be Mother Teresa or or um, Oh, Florence Nightingale or Joan of Arc, you know, these were all my <laughs> heroines and I was very, very pulled in by the messages of Jesus, although I've never, I've never been a Christian, but, and then later on in life, very interested in Buddhism particularly, and that is still very interested in Buddhism, uh, Hinduism. Um, so anyway, long, I'm trying to keep it, that's not a very short explanation, is it, but it gives you a bit of background. <laughs> Sorry, I'm the, you'll have to tell me to shut up, Robert. I'm the real chatterbox when I get onto this. It's kind of, I mean, this is what happens. Literally, you I'll open this up to me, and it's like, you know, I'm on a cloud, and the energy pours in, and information pours in. Yeah. And channeling is a good word for it in a way. People say to me, are your writings, is that you, or are you channeling? And I say, well, it feels like one and the same, actually. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of like I've got um, a telephone line to the other world inside me. Um, that's how it feels. And obviously a lot of people wouldn't go along with my writings and some would, but that's what brought me to it. That's the healing element for me is when I go, when I write and the more I write, I lose track of time in this dimension. I lose track of, I even don't feel the pain. I even don't feel anxiety. I just sometimes it's, I get huge posts coming through, and I have to I have to type it really quickly yeah. as it's coming, and then just edit it a little bit. Yeah. And other times it's a little bit more gentle. When I write the stories, they're um, they're a little bit more contemplative. They don't rush in. I get the idea and the imagery of the story, and then. Mm -hmm. I think it's partly, you know, it's a mixture of my imagination and my interest in uh, sort of fantasy and mm -hmm. mythology and angels and all that stuff that comes together with what comes through me. Right, your turn. <laughs> yeah, I was say, I, okay, I'd like to pick up with this mention of the imagery. Uh -huh. and, and for those, again, who have not yet begun to enjoy your postings, um, along with the written word are images and the images are just exquisite and and we've talked about those images in the past but what I want to ask you about the images in particular is many of these images feature dance or yeah. other or other graceful postures yeah. and w uh -huh. what does dance mean to you I uh... I think it, I've done dancing because I wasn't uh, a singer, actress, and dance. I wasn't dancing wasn't my main thing, but ever, I did dance as a child, and I've done dancing shows and things like that. And when I can't dance at the moment, which is because of the pain and, and restriction on my body, but I long for it. And I think when I have danced, it's again another. Like when I sing, when I sing, I go into that other world as well. When I dance, <clears throat> when I dance, it's the same. I lose myself, myself as in Lorna, and I'm somewhere else. And it's the freedom of expression and the beautiful shapes and postures. Um, I do yoga, and I love, you know, that I love all the the expansion of the body and the expansion of the spirit that seems to come with the creative arts, you know, singing, dancing, and colour as well. Colour has an immense impact mm -hmm. on me, and when I pick the images for the mm -hmm. posts, mm -hmm. the colours, the designs, it, it has to speak to me, and they have to jump out at me. I, I, sometimes I look for the images first, I'll look for images, and that will the one will shout out at me almost and the, and then the post the, the words come. Other times I'll get the words coming and then I'll find I'll write something and then I'll find an image to go with it. Mm -hmm. But grace I love the word grace and grace is something I've always talked about and it is a per I don't know why, but for me it's a perfect word. Like um 
serenity is that as well. Words like that that just, you can't quite, again, there's not quite the right words in this language to express what that means, but to be full of grace, to be surrounded by grace, it to me feels, um, <laughs> it's just like, I don't even see the words aren't there. It's like being in a light, being, being embraced, being surrounded with love, um, and just, just wanting to give it out. Just wanting to give it out in some way. And the way I can do it at the moment is to write, but I've never written before apart from songs. So, you know, I have to say this is, it's been a surprise to me that in a year and over a year, it's gone from 10 likes to, I think I've got 11 11,000 something now. Um, it's been every day, I think. It, am I a fraud? Is this real? You know, it's, it's, but I just go, I just keep doing it because it feels good. And people are saying it's helping them very much. Um, some people said it, they read them every day and they want me to write a book with, with the stories and, yeah. you know, yeah. something I'm now thinking about because people are asking. Um, I don't know how to go about publishing it or anything, or, but, you know, it's a nice idea. Um, and when I get, when I get comments that say, this is exactly, you know, thank you, you have, I had one the other day and they said that I had spent so hours looking through, um, different sites, different posts, and I've read this of yours or that, and suddenly it all makes sense. Now, if I can just, I've always said with my singing, I will sing to one person, I will sing to 10,000 people. If it touches one person alone, that makes a difference. And I think when you're chronically ill, you, I've got, I got to a stage where I felt very useless and a big burden on everybody. And I need, I need to express myself creativity, creatively and spiritually more than anything. And I think that is the same. I'm trained as a homeopath. When we trained as homeopath, we were told that health is about being free creatively and express, you know, in expression, creativity and um, a lot of dis-ease. I've always put it dis-ease as in disease, but is because we, we are, we are, we are suppressed as children often, or we are taught to be something we're not, or we're told to be something we're not. So I want my, if I can just touch people's hearts in any way, whatever it is, if it's the image, the words, my comment to them or whatever, it doesn't matter to me um, as long as, you know, I just, it makes me feel that I'm making some kind of contribution to the world. Mm -hmm. And that's very important to me. In fact, it's the only thing that's important to me, um, really. I want to do this. And I think... I think being so ill has led me to the place, so I cannot regret anything I've been through. Yes. No matter how horrific it was, yeah. I can't regret it because I'm now in a place where I feel so, almost like I could just walk out the door into that world. You know, it's that close. It's, yeah. Sometimes you have to step out of it just to deal with some physical things, you know, but yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd like to explore a little bit with you about the real world. Now, the real world, as you've talked about... What are you about, talking about? <laughs> the real world, as you've talked about, is not this physical, physical world. This world, for example, that people watching this video are experiencing it in. But yes. this real world is, it is this really true not place is this true place that mm -hmm. through sanctuary with Eden, you're able to go. And can you share with us a little bit about how this real world differs from this illusionary world? Yes, I can. <laughs> um, it's peace. It's serenity, it's love, it's, um, it's formless, mm. and yet I 
see things, um, but that I don't see things in the way that I see human beings. But I I recognise things as forms. It's very hard to explain, but there is none of the there is none of the head stuff. There is no chaos. There's no tangling. There's no um, there's no struggle or force. It's um it, it's all expansive and all inclusive, and it's like being held, I suppose, as a as a baby. I mean, my motherly instincts are huge, and if I could have done, I would have had hundred children, and if I could, I would look after all the children in the world. But it's kind of like that. It's kind of like it's all embracing and um. Pure, there's a pureness about it, a stillness about it that we don't have in this world. This world is so noisy, so cluttered, so contrary and contradictory and, is that the same word? <laughs> but it's clear, it's like a clear view. Even on a stormy day, it's like there's a clear view and it's light. There's no density, there's no weight, there's no heaviness, there's no... It's just... <laughs> it's home. It's home. It's home. That's it. And actually, I like that you said that, because one of the first posts I put up was that very thing. It was about the feeling that nearly everyone I've ever met in my life has had or talked about is longing for something and wanting something but never being able to to fill it, yearning for something and hence getting into addiction and things like that or um, comfort eating or impulsive relationships or, and also bad relationships because it's a longing for love, it's a longing to fill that gap but unfortunately I think that people are seeing love just in quite a narrow, narrow way, then they're looking outside of themselves to fill that hole. And that hole isn't actually empty, it's full, but because we don't recognize it, we think it's empty and we go out there looking, searching, struggling, causing ourselves actually to drift further and further away from home you know, in the true sense of the word. Um, so I think if that's kind of what I would love to 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 tell to show people to show them that everything they need is right there. It's right here, it's all around us, but we have blocked it for some reason, either through conditioning or traumas or, you know, things can destroy people um if and I, what saddens me is that if people haven't got this understanding or this spiritual um, connection, they are, it's almost, well, people say they use the word they're asleep, you know, and then they say they're awakened when they don't, when they, when they um, realize that there is something more. But I feel immense sadness for those who don't have any any of that and I'll just just believe that this world is about suffering and that suffering is bad. Suffering isn't bad. It's the way you suffer that that is the key. It's the way you suffer and what you what you believe the suffering is showing you. If you believe that it the world is against you, then you're lost. The world isn't against you, the universe isn't against you. The real world is certainly not against you. It's all for you. And so, but it's so hard with the conditioning that we get in this life to get this through. So, what I'm finding on Sanctuary is, is doing the writings with the imagery seems to have an immense impact on people. Somehow, the two together go really well. Did I answer your question or have I gone off on a tangent? No, you've answered the question beautifully and, and you know, you've, you've, you've gifted me with the opportunity in talking about suffering 
Um, oh, yes. You know, it reminds me of the beautiful wisdom a teaching that we don't experience suffering. No. We suffer our experience. Yes, exactly. You know, yes. um, and you've so beautifully shared that with us in talking about the real world, home. Home. Um, it's know. definitely my home. Yeah. Um, it's I used to think I, sorry. It's all our home. <laughs> it's everybody's home, yes, absolutely. I used to say when I was a child, I think I got on the wrong bus, you know, in the wrong place. But I don't think I am anymore. I think I'm in the right place. Um, and I think that I, I think we all have something to contribute. And yeah. all I'm doing is going with flow, literally. I am going with what comes to me daily. Sometimes nothing comes and I have a day off. <laughs> um, but... I think in that time I've realized the quiet when I don't write, it's like stuff is, I don't know, whether they're compiling stuff or whether I'm, but something's happening and then there's another flood of it all. So I write, I might write quite a lot in one day or yeah. might write through the night. It depends. They, it wakes me up. I mean, I have to do it when, when it comes, I have to do it. Mm. I'm on call 24-7, Robert. It's, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not getting paid. <laughs> Uh, yes, you are. Just, yes, you are. Yes, you are. And no, and and dear Lorna, if you have gotten off on the wrong stop, <laughs> we're, we're all blessed for it. Oh, bless you. That's a lovely thing to say. Thank hmm? you, Rob. Thank hmm? you. I'm blessed to have uh, to have stumbled upon you. I think, <laughs> or actually, not stumbled, is it really? I mean, <laughs> Part of the plan, isn't it? That's right. That's right. No. I want to say one more thing about suffering just before we move on, or yeah. if we can, I don't know yep. what the plan. Yeah. About suffering, I just want to say to people that um, that when you suffer, try to always look. Try to try to hold, even if you don't believe it to start with. Try to hold the belief that there is a bigger, much bigger picture that you cannot sometimes see, often see. And sometimes it might be years later, it might be the next day, or it might be a next lifetime, but there is a reason and there's a bigger picture and it, it's trying to teach you something. It's not trying to make you suffer. It's just trying to open doors for you so that you can actually rest and be at peace and, and have pink all around you. My, I see a lot of pale pink. That's very comforting. Heart. Heart. Anyway, carry on. Is it over or is there another well, question? I, was gonna say, I, think that, I think that's a beautiful place to leave it and to remind uh, people if they want to enjoy your postings uh, they can do so on the Sacred Attention Therapy Study Group, which is a Facebook group. So go into Facebook um, and search for Sacred Attention Therapy, and you'll come up with a Facebook group, and you can join and enjoy your postings daily, Lorna. As huh. well, if people wanted to uh, connect with you and enjoy your um, uh, your postings, in other mm -hmm. ways, how could they, Lorna? At the moment, I keep saying this because I'm trying not to kind of force anything to happen, but at the moment it is just on Facebook, I'm afraid. Okay. So, Sanctuary, just type in Sanctuary with Eden okay. and you'll find it. Um, there may well be a website in time, I don't know, but it depends where I'm led. And also, I am considering because people, I've had many requests to visit different countries, <laughs> particularly India, which is where some a place I'd love to go, but I'm not well enough to travel at the moment. But I, there's a feeling that something else is coming, and it might be that I, I offer one-to-one -one, um, chats like this with people um, who've got problems and. Um, or just want to talk to me face to face because you know if if that if that's the need then then I'll meet that need. <laughs> so I'm just 
I just go in with mm -hmm. both again. I think the world is ready for you, Lorna. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I think I am due to, I just want to say this quickly because um, I may not be posting as much over sort of September, October time. I'm going to hospital for possibly three months or so. Yeah. Um, I'm going to still try and write from hospital, but it may be a bit difficult. Um, but I'm, and I'm getting some other treatment and I'm quite, I feel now that I feel like something it, it is changing, and I think the ill. I think I really believe that I'm going to recover, and and then there's no stopping me. So you better make a bed up for me, Robert, and <laughs> bear room <being> ready, because <laughs> I'll be over there. Okay. okay. <laughs> Well, before you go in for your next treatment, I hope we'll have another opportunity to chat. Yes, I hope so. I'd love to. That'd be great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, Marna. Love to everyone. Love to you. Everyone. <laughs> love to you, too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye.